100.1 FM and AM 1020 KDKA. It's Today in Pittsburgh Labor with Jay Doc and Krause. Talk, listen, and speak to the region's most influential leaders. This is Today in Pittsburgh Labor with Jay Doc and Krause. And welcome in, everyone, to another edition of Today in Pittsburgh Labor with Jay Doc and Krause as we broadcast to you on KDKA 100.1 FM and 1020 AM. Jay Doc off this weekend, got a great show lined up for you, and we thank all of our listeners who uh, have become religious to tuning in to Today in Pittsburgh Labor. We've covered a lot of ground since we uh, debuted here on KDKA. We'll be here every week uh, talking about Today in Pittsburgh labor. Our guest tonight uh, resides at the other end of the state of Pennsylvania, and by the time we finish uh, our interview or our chat uh, with John Kane, you'll understand and you'll have a better sense as to why he's joining us today on uh, Today in Pittsburgh Labor. We continue to talk about the Post-Gazette strike now well north of 100 days. Uh, the institution uh, in um, Pittsburgh, the Post-Gazette, uh, is at a standstill, or the workers are at a standstill uh, with management, uh, and we continue to try and educate the public about what's happening. Before we get into the dialogue, let me welcome in uh, State Senator uh, John Kane, who joins us here on Today in Pittsburgh Labor. John, a good, uh, welcome in. Uh, well, Thanks for joining us. Hey, Krause, thanks a lot for having me. And any time I can help out, this is, uh, you know, this is something that uh, I'm looking forward to talk about. Now, John, and I appreciate you coming on and uh, some of your uh, credentials and, and, and what you've done uh, in your life and, and in terms of um, uh, fighting for working people uh, and working families um, has put you now in a position where not only can you continue to do this, that, uh, but you're also now in a position not only as a state senator, uh, but also serving as the minority chair uh, on the labor and industry on the labor and industry uh, committee. Before we talk about the strike, about the Post Gazette strike, give the audience just kind of a uh, kind of an overview, John. Uh, you know of your career in uh, uh, in, in labor. Sure. So I, I, you know, served an apprenticeship with Plumbers Local 690 and rose through the ranks as a, you know, an apprentice to a journeyman to a master plumber. I got involved in my union. Uh, I ended up, I was put on the political action committee in 1991, rose through the ranks. I ended up in 1999, ended up becoming a union organizer. 2003 became the business agent. And then in 2007, I took over, you know, the largest plumbers union in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, 2007, we were booming with work. The man that uh, I, you know, I, I ended up following, uh, Ed Keenan, when he retired, he, he turned it over because of the fact that we had so much work going on at that time. Uh, then we saw what happened in 2008 with uh, the, the, the recession hit us, went from you know, having full employment to 450 members out within three months. That being said, Krause, then when my members started to run out of unemployment, we ended up, um, I saw 10 of my members uh, commit suicide. I ended up from 2007 to 2020 when I retired, I had close to 24 of my members overdosed and died because of the opioid epidemic. So I'm taking a little bit of this, to the, to the, to the capital. Um, I've been there. I know what it's like to be out of work. I know what it's like to run out of unemployment. I certainly knew what it was like not to have any money. Um, but I think um, it's, it's a voice that needs to be heard up there. I've advocated for union membership, uh, my entire life. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it, I've been fortunate enough to, to, to end up winning the election. I'm moving forward. You know, in the state Senate, I roughly say about 75% of the people in that room are lawyers. 
But there's only one master plumber in that room, Krause, and that's me. And I'm so, uh, so glad you're there. And I want the audience, and, and thank you for sharing a little bit about your uh, the timeline and the history uh, of your um, union career, because I think it's so important and relevant uh, to what we're talking about here in Pittsburgh on KDKA right now, John. You've been uh, through uh, labor negotiations. You have been through strikes. You have been through positions when the parent company has taken a hard line stance uh, against the workers who are out there walking on a picket line, as we mentioned in this case for the Post-Gazette workers. Uh, the strike now is nor well north of 100 days. The last contract just celebrated its six-year an uh, anniversary uh, of not being done. So there's a lot here uh, to unpack. Talk about that a little bit, because from your perspective, you know um, what the workers are going through, and you also understand the position uh, that this the parent company of the Post Gazette block communications. What they're trying to do? Yeah, uh, it's it's all about partnering, and it's unfortunate that you know the, our, our brothers and sisters out in Allegheny County there or um, dealing with this, especially 100 days. That's an awful long time. And negotiations is probably the hardest thing to go through. It, uh, it, it divides everybody. The contract, well, in my, my, my state with the, you know, I had to deal with the contractor groups. But when you're dealing with the, you know, the block um, and, and, you know, his people, the hardest thing to do is to actually try to negotiate when, you know, he's probably sitting there saying they're losing money every year, losing money, losing money. Everybody's losing money. Inflation, you know, costs are going up. It's extremely difficult. I had to negotiate in 2008 during the hardest time with a recession, and I was able to negotiate, and we never, we never struck one day. You know, it came close, but we were able to get to the table at the last minute and make it work. I ended up, I always look at his negotiation, nobody wins in negotiations. Nobody. If you think you're going to have the upper hand and you're not going to give, you're not going to end up negotiating. Negotiations to me was that I wasn't going to come out a winner and neither was the person I was going to negotiate with. They weren't going to come out a winner, but guess what? It's a win-win for both of us if we end up we're coming and we can get it to sign off and you know, you have a collective bargain here agreement. It's unfortunate that you're going through that right now. Um, to my brothers and sisters out in Allegheny County, I feel for you. My, my suggestion is, you know, continue to work with your legislators that are out there. Get them to support you. Make sure that you end up, you, you have, um, you know, the, the local communities out there supporting you. You know, while you're out there striking, it's nice to beat your horn. Let the people know that you're thinking about them. Um, it's, it's, um, hopefully that they can get this resolved. What I would end up suggesting is that Mr. Block get back to the negotiating table. Times, you know, it's enough time is going by now. And let's see what you can do to get this, you know, this fence mended. Well, what is amazing about how you finished up that statement, John, is the uh, the entire city of Pittsburgh um, is supporting the workers. The Post Gazette, as you know, is an institution uh, in Western Pennsylvania. Uh, the mayor is um, outspoken uh, on behalf of the Post Gazette workers. Uh, the union and the workers themselves have come together and taken concession after concession after concession, almost now negotiating against themselves to try and get movement. Um, a judge ruled in favor uh, of the workers, ordering a second arbitrator back in, which is now under, uh, uh, um, which uh, it, part of that order is now under appeal. So there's this hard, fast line in the sand that has been uh, that has been drawn by the legal team representing the parent company block communications and I'm trying to figure out how to get past that point in time because that's where we are you're right and and you the way I, I I look at things is that okay 
Locke's feelings, Locke communications feelings are hurt. You know, these guys went out on strike. That's the last hammer. That's, that's the hammer that the union members have. Once we go out on strike, that's it. There's nobody going to do any work, you know, and then, of course, you got the picket lines. And, of course, what ends up happening in the picket lines is now the picketers got it. They're only limited to so many people. And then what ends up happening is they get outnumbered by the people that are taking over their jobs. There's a lot of bad blood. And you're going to say, those fights, and I know they're happening because I saw one on the news not long ago about them, this fight. But you, you, I, I believe what you have to do is you got to, you know, start over again, start fresh. You know, maybe a, a new arbitrator coming in is not a bad thing. Um, I think that the bad blood's got to be, you know, pushed to the side and seeing about it. They want, if block communications is serious about making any kind of money, I would highly suggest that they get back to the table. You know, um, the, the members want to get back to work. That's all they want to do is they want to go work. They want to provide for their families. They want to send their kids to school, and they want to have a house over their head. State Senator John Kane joining us here. This is Today in Pittsburgh Labor with Jadock and Krause as we broadcast to you on KDKA 100.1 FM and 1020 AM. We are going on strike because of unfair labor practices where the company literally canceled the health care. Uh, being a mom on strike and being a single mom on strike to two young kids, uh, it's very nerve-wracking, um, a little bit stressful. I'm doing my best to look at it as everything will work out and i got to just trust um, the situation, uh, but it's very nerve-wracking. I'm a mailer in the mailroom, been an employee here for 28 years. I'm a third-generation employee. Between my grandpa, my dad, and me, we have close to, if not more than 100 years of loyal employment with this company. You can call the Post-Gazette and tell them you do not want to have a paper delivered. You do not want a paper delivered until this labor dispute is finalized and settled. Back here with State Senator John Kane joining us uh, on today in Pittsburgh Labor. Uh, John, as I mentioned, uh, when we opened up the show today, um, one of the committees where you are the minor minority chair, you're the minority chair of the Labor and Industry uh, Committee. Um, is there any teeth in the law? Is there any support out there outside of this uh, standoff between block communications um, and the workers who remain on the picket line? Is there any teeth out there that can, I don't want to say, well, yeah, I do want to say, maybe force this into a position where they can negotiate the closure? You know, I, I, Joe, that's a that's a good point, and I'm glad that you brought that up. You know, I I just got I just got appointed to the minority chair of labor and industry. I was on a, I was the minority chair on a communication and technology. Uh, but one of the things that you know I would suggest that they do is maybe go to the to the senators in the district, you know, in 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 that entire area, and try to get some sort of a petition through the Senate or through the House. And get, you know, get all the legislators to sign off on it. Let them know that they're up in arms on it. Because quite honestly, everything's politics, no matter what. And I'm sure block communications is going to be coming, knocking at the door for state help and funding at some point in time. And if they're not working, if they're not going to sit down and negotiate, they're not going to end up getting any kind of help from any of the elected officials there. Now, that's only my suggestion. I don't know who the state senator is that's there, but I'm sure I have a good relationship with them. If they want me to see if I can drum up something and, you know, try to put some petition together, we can drum it up, write it up for them. And if they want to pass it around for people to sign throughout the state, I think that would only benefit them. That way you get the block communications to let them know this is getting real serious now. 
John, I, I have, and I don't know if I'm out of line when I've said this to some of the workers and, I, and when I talked with Ed Mooney and I had the conversation with Ed from the CWA and, uh, you know, I've advocated to, uh, for the workers on strike uh, to come down to Har to take the trip uh, down to Harrisburg and try and bring, I know it's a public entity, but try and bring this strike to the floor. And I think that's kind of what you are suggesting through the uh, through the potential of a petition, um, so I appreciate you putting that out there. Something has to happen for this to get past the point of being stonewalled by the attorneys, uh, no matter what. Um, so that uh, you know, and that's kind of uh, where we find ourselves. We continue to cover uh, the strike here on today in Pittsburgh labor. A um, couple last points. John, um, that I wanted to uh, have you talk about, because you can talk about them. Uh, one of the issues in the strike is health care. And it is, as a, as a union member, as a, as a member of the union community, um, you, you relied heavily on the health care that the union was able to provide. Talk about that. So th that's, that's another great question. So one of the things with the union is, that, or at least with our union, is we provided health care for our members. And, and, and we, we, we paid into our own personal health care that came at a high, high cost. But the thing is, though, it was a Cadillac plan. You know, it was the best. I don't think there's any kind of a plan that's out there that comes even close. My contractors, and, and this is something that block communication should think about. These are your people that work for you, that you employ. You should be proud of what you're doing. Instead of having these guys striking and women striking out in front of your property, maybe you ought to look at them realizing that they have family. And that you're able to provide for them to put a roof over their head, send them to school, send them to college. You know, that's, that's what, that's what the, the middle class is about. It's not about being so wealthy and going to the Kentucky Derby and getting drunk up in your, you know, your, your, your own private plane. It's about taking care of the people that you employ. You want them to have health care. Anybody knows, especially people in this neck of the woods here, they know John Kane had cancer. If I didn't have good health care, I would be a dead man. Now you have members of that used to work for you that are outside your plant. At any given moment, can be diagnosed with cancer. How would that make you feel knowing that that individual, because he has no benefits whatsoever, may end up dying? And not mostly may end up dying, will end up dying, unfortunately. State Senator John Kane joining us here on Today in uh, Pittsburgh Labor. Uh, John, appreciate you jumping on uh, to the program uh, and being certainly a part of, uh, of, of the labor movement. Um, I hope that we get the opportunity um, to pull you in to lead the charge on this petition, or at least help gather uh, all of the support that the Post-Gazette workers have, uh, and take it from Pittsburgh down to Harrisburg and see what happens. But uh, appreciate it, uh, John Kane. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. State Senator John Kane joining us here. This is Today in Pittsburgh Labor with Jay Doc and Krause. Back in a moment. Pittsburgh is a union town, so when the owners of the Post-Gazette hire out-of-town lawyers to try to break our unions, we don't back down. Workers at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette are on strike, and we need your support. We're the ones who design, print, and distribute the paper, sell ads, handle accounts, and create Pulitzer Prize-winning journalism. We help our neighbors stay informed day in and day out, but we haven't had a raise in over 15 years and the owners of the paper, Block Communications, illegally cut our health care. We deserve better. We deserve respect. Please keep our strike strong and show the millionaire Block family we're not alone. If you subscribe to the paper, cancel your subscription. If you read stories online, don't visit the site until the strike is resolved. Support our strike. Drop the Post-Gazette. Visit ppgstrike.org. 
paid for.